Hello, welcome to Star Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. In the chapel, in everything give thanks, for it is the will of God in Jesus Christ concerning you. First Thessalonians 5.18. So it's Thanksgiving week, and I'm pretty thankful. I know my life has changed a lot, but I am thankful for a lot of things. Um, basically just life itself, being here and, and being able to do what I want and what I need to do. And just living life so I'm really happy with that still thankful for my kids um, that there's roof over my head food on the table uh, and that kind of stuff I have a job through all of this I have not not had a job so I'm good and very thankful for everything God has provided for me so this is probably gonna be a little bit of a shorter one too because I've had to take a break a little bit from crocheting, but I had some other things in the hopper. Um, so, uh, totally hooked, I don't have anything. Um, in the basket, I do have some things. I have some new things you haven't seen, new pattern to talk about, um, some new kits to talk about. So, here it goes. Um, we'll start with in the basket, and first, so, you know that I play with yarn in that and so I took this pattern and I love this pattern almost looks like lace work and it's called a touch of Venus and this is from crochet wear by Ann Riggs there's 25 patterns in there and this is the same book that has a geo in it that I've been working on well it's in timeout I actually picked it up and did one round the other day just so that I could say it's not in timeout <laughs> But yeah, it, the geo is in here. I'm not finding it. Of course, you guys know when I want to find something, I never can find it. And then I just drop the book and there it is or whatever. I'm not seeing it. Uh, of course. But this book does have the geo in it. I just can't prove it right now. This is ridiculous. Okay, so here's the front picture of the geo. Right there, the green one. That one. Okay, so it's got the same one in that, and it's by Ann Riggs. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Ann Regis. R-E-G-I-S. And so I'm doing this one, but she did hers with um, the Charles Calazzoni Venus. I, I don't know, but she had different ones and different colors and I think there's 10 balls of yarn used to do that and I'm not willing to do that I wanted number one I wanted it to be for winter so I thought simple pattern easy workup how can I change it and modify it to be what I want so I started with oh, sorry I started with 100% oops dog slobbered Moreno hand spun. Okay. Yes, it's a little twisty, but I I want it that way because I want this to last a little bit. But here it is, and it's not as drapey, but I want it for winter, so I want it to be uh, tighter. When I block it, it's going to stretch on out. You can see that. And the weight of the other one does it. So this one's going to stretch out when I block it and stuff, but it's thicker, and I wanted it for winter. And it's my favorite color so yeah I think it'll look cute but I am about half I'm just gonna do until the fall is gone so I don't know how long it'll be but and it has dog slobber right there yeah yeah worm loves wool don't ask me why he inherits it from his owner I guess I don't know so there's the first one that I'm working on and honestly that is really quick if you can chain and do a granny square turn you can do that one super super easy the other one that I'm working on that shares the same bag here is I'm still working on this little guy it's getting longer okay so obviously um, and this is the one that came because my kit was late last month okay so I've been working on that one like I said these two are sharing a bag just because it's easier to keep track of one bag and keep warm out of it 
than it is to have bags for them by themselves. So, sorry. All right, then if you remember, I got this kit, which the other one, that little scarf thing was in it. And I started working on it. But this had the pattern for the slippers in it and the hat. Well, that gave me an idea. Okay, so these are the slippers that it was meant to make. And I had had trouble figuring out what I was going to do for RJ and my daughter's other half. So, I have a pattern that I use to make what I call quick slips. They're quick slippers. And basically, it's in the rounds. And then you just you go in the round up until you hit this point and then you just start going back and forth back and forth and seam up the heel and it makes a cute little slipper enough to keep your feet warm I'm just doing a half double crochet and seamed it up I'm on the second one and the only thing that's important to do is keep where you're because you're doing it in the round you want to make sure that you know so that your rows are even so I have that one and I am using that yarn and it's the Euro Baby, and it's super soft. So, soft cotton worsted. There you go, it's Babe. And it says on the side, Euro Baby. So, I have this one. I didn't need a pair of slippers, but these work up super quick. I actually, I haven't taken this one off because you can tie on here and make it, but then I'm afraid it that RJ's foot won't fit in there. I'm thinking it will, but so I'm gonna make these little slippers and then and I'm gonna make a pair of slippers for each of the men. Okay, so once the men get their slippers, then I got this month's kit already. And this month's kit, oops, that one goes with that one is something I've never worked with and so I'm hoping I'm hoping it will turn out half as good as I hope it will I don't know <laughs> I'm hoping that I'll do it and turn it out so I got this month's kit I've been working on just those things I didn't even start the slippers until I got this month's kit and that's when I figured out what I was going to do for the men this is the kit and you'll see why and I don't have babies in my life. Um, so there is two patterns for baby blankets. Now the funny thing about baby blankets, if you change the size, they become lap throws. Mm -hmm. So baby blanket, lap throw, baby blanket, lap throw. It's all the same to me. So, I got two of these, and one is perfect for RJ. Um, in the kit came uh, fleece hugs, one for each of those blankets. Now, this one is kind of blues and, and grays, and yeah. It's more like a greenish aqua right there. And that's kind of a green and that's a gray. Yeah, and a white. And then there's another gray repeat on the inside. And this would be good for a guy. Thought, okay. So the blue slippers with that, you know, you come in from a hard day's work, you can warm up. Now. RJ is going to get the same color slippers just because I have enough yarn of that and I don't want to have to go match it. But the second skein that came, you know, anytime they do baby blankets, they want to do a girl one. So this is um, gray, white, pink, dark gray, and light white. And if you know, RJ's bedroom is gray and pink. This is perfect for his bedroom. Perfect little throw to put over his legs, keep him warm. I've never worked with fleece before and it's like a string with little fleecy fringe on it let me see there oops so I've not really I don't know that you can see it 
I've never worked with this before. It's soft. It's super soft. I mean, fleece is soft. So we're going to find out. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take whatever I just did through there. I'm losing things. So this right here for a baby throw. Oh, here's a bigger picture of it. First, it's got too many little holes. Um, it's cute. I think it's got too many little holes. And this one, the completed pattern measures 34 by 34, a square. Well, this one, and it, whoops, it looks to be a little bit more dense. So I'm thinking that this one would make a good throw. And it completed, it says it's 35 by 33. And pretty much there's a chart. So um, when it says on the first row to chain, you know, it's 33 inches wide, which is almost a yardstick and it's a little bit longer. So I'm thinking that this is a good size for a lap throw. Um, so you got a yardstick, and most people's legs aren't three foot long. And then it goes, you know, a little bit wider. So I'm thinking I'm going to try this one. It's a super simple um, chart, and I think it looks cute. So it's definitely more dense than the other one. So, yeah, I think I'm going to take both skeins. I'm going to make this pattern. And I will have a pink throw for RJ with little footy slippers. And a pink throw for my daughter's other half and little footy slippers. And they can warm up every night in the winter. <laughs> so that is what they're going to get for Christmas. Now, the problem is, is i got to keep working on those. I've got to get, this is November. This is the latest I've ever had something really that I'm, pushing to get done so I've got two baby blankets or two throws and one and a half pairs of slippers to get done um I'm gonna be the little engine that could I think I can I think I can I think I can <laughs> that way I can really pretty much get on it um the patterns that I'm going to use for the blankets should go really fast and I'm only going through the one skein of yarn, so or fleece in this case. So yeah, and it's really scrunchy because it doesn't like you have to push it in to get it in there. I'm always scared I'm gonna get it in a zipper. But I'm gonna start on these. Uh, I stopped working on the two that I showed you, the little scarf and my scarf, and started doing the um, slippers. So I can get those done and then concentrate on the blankets. Uh, that is all I really have in the baskets uh, because I decided I made my daughter a poncho. But she's always crafty and stuff. And I had this old cutting board. And right now it looks like this. It, it was just wood. I coffee dyed it. I'm going to take these handles off because see they're old and nasty. But this is solid wood. So I've made a little tray for her to put. She loves Christmas. And of course we've got catty, cats and dogs and Santa hats. And it says Merry Christmas. And we've got some little things. And I just decoupage those on. I've got another coat of decoupage to put over it. And I'm going to add some uh, opaque glitter so that it looks shimmery. And then I'm going to give her this too. So I did stop kind of the whole speed crocheting thing and take care of some other things that I wanted to get done. Uh, also at work, um, so I work at a vet office and the doctors and the techs have to scrub in for surgeries and everything has to be sanitizable. So they have to have their hair up underneath a scrub cap or surgery cap, whatever you want to call it. They all have different surgery caps, but there's one doctor who prefers a certain type. 
and she was bought that type, but then she can't find them because they're laundried and laundered and put through the um, sanitation and they're sealed up in packets. So she couldn't find hers. So I was standing there one day and she was like, I'm gonna order some. They're 20 bucks. And I was like, what? And I looked at her and I said, I'll tell you what, you go to Hobby Lobby and get the material. I'll make them any style you want. And I said, you won't have to guess. You won't have to pay shipping and handling. I said, just go to Hobby Lobby, pick me up whatever fabric you like. And I said, get half yard. And I said, that'll be enough at least to make two. I knew for sure I could make two, but I wasn't sure, you know, how much it would take to make. So she went and she got a half yard. She actually got a quarter of a yard of two different kinds of material. And I have made, I have one done and it's already in use. And then I have this one that I just put the elastic in. I still have two more to put the elastic in. Yes, a quarter of yarn, a quarter yard or a fat quarter. Um, either way, will make you two scrub hats. Just saying. So it's the kind she likes. She likes to be able to it's got the little knob here that pulls up and fits her head. She likes these because she can get all of her hair up underneath them. And what these are is they are a six inch circle with a half inch added on for seam allowance. 24 inch long, seven inch wide rectangle sewed on it and it's pleated to mat you know here's the front with the center pleat and then i just pleated it evenly around and then a foot back and i did have to adjust this for her because right at a foot back it the where it gathers it gathers right on her ear so i moved them back a little bit the first one's exactly at a foot but the second one this one is moved back and then I have the little center opening here in the thing so you can pull this and it tightens around her head. So she's super happy with them. Um, I did only make one and then I went, I actually had them made up. I just didn't do the final elastic in them um, because, well, because this is just flat. I hemmed it and I had this pressed. I just didn't have the elastic in it. So, yeah, they're scrub hats. And all of her hair, the thing is, is all of my hair fits up underneath there. Um, and she wanted one that all of her hair would fit up underneath there comfortably. So she takes it, she puts it in a little bun, and then she sticks this on. And she's good. She's like, I got this. So I made four of those. I still have, as you can see, the elastic is just, pinched on there or clipped on there and I will be putting those in today and I have this one done and I already took her one at work that was this material right here the only thing I will say is watch the direction of your material because you don't want it to look ridiculous you know so I did watch and I made sure all of my little flower stems are pointing down um you know you want it to look right and all of my flowers go backwards so it the front starts here and it flows back and this one same thing I decided which direction looked down with the stems and then I just have all the stems going in the right direction so yep no pattern no anything just did it it was super easy um, just took the measurements off of one that she found that she, was the style like she tried it on it was the right style she goes yes I want to like it like this I said okay give me the material um, and she bought the little knobs things I already had the elastic so made those <sighs> and for half a yard of fabric she has four not two which is good she's happy with that so now she's got her four scrub hats and Nobody else can take them. They're hers. But that means she has to watch them, wash them and uh, seal them. <laughs> she has to sterilize her own nail. She's like, I don't care. As long as they're mine and I can find them, I'm good. So, 
I worked on that. Um, just a little bit of sewing and the decoupage for my daughter and then the crocheting that's going on. We are getting ready for Thanksgiving dinner. We're going to have ours here Sunday. Um, RJ is going down to his girlfriend's on Thursday and my daughter's having the one with her other half's family on Thursday and I only have Thursday off and then I have to work Friday and then I get the weekend so I'm gonna cook on Saturday and we're gonna have our dinner on Sunday and of course Christy's gonna come and the kids and um, RJ's girlfriend I think is coming too so she came last year and all that good stuff but other than that I don't have anything in the pots in the field uh, in the farmhouse honestly just working on this stuff going to work and getting uh, food ready I, I went and did the grocery shopping for Thanksgiving dinner this year is going to be a smaller one we're not doing a 27 pound turkey we're just going to do a ham um, and I figure it'll be enough we're going to do ham mashed potatoes and gravy uh, I'm doing apple cherry and pumpkin pie. I'm not going to do a cheesecake this year. Uh, I'm not going to bake the, oh, sorry, the pumpkin and the banana bread. Literally those things get one piece eaten out of them and then they sit and they end up in the freezer and then I thaw them out over time and it just, we waste more. So yeah, it's great to have this big spread that looks great, but I don't have room in the freezer this year, so I'm pretty much just going to make what we are. And I'm trying to figure out how to make a center crust, and, and I may pre-bake the bottom crust of my apple and cherry pie so that I'm, I'm going to try and make a half of an apple and half of a cherry pie. Um, everybody eats pumpkin, so that's what they associate with pumpkin and then we end up sending home the apple and the cherry and all that so i've decided that since we end up with too much i'm going to just try and make half of a pie on each just one pie but half cherry half apple with a crust between it who knows it might work it may not we might have a cherry apple pie i don't know <laughs> so that is one thing that I am going to try. If I figure out a way to do it, I'll let y'all know. Um, but other than that, we're really not doing, um, I'm not really doing a whole lot in the crochet in that. Just like I said, I, that one shawl, I started it. And last week after I got done with the podcast, I just had that scarf and the geo. And I'd gotten the sweater done. And so I thought I, I'll look at do this little shawl this will be fine I, instead of it being a shawl I'll make it tighter thicker and make it a winter scarf um yeah no <laughs> then the um uh, and I showed I had showed you this kit last week and I was like oh that's cute I might make those I finished George's hat I have everything done for work and then when this one came and I still didn't know for sure what I was going to do for RJ and my daughter's other half then when this one came and I was like that's pretty cool those colors are cool I decided I could make the blankets and the slippers but not this kind of slipper I had to adjust for a man's foot and I wanted it real stretchy because I don't know both their sizes so I'm gonna make these two and then I should have enough of this to make me something a hat and scarf set at least so I might not get to use this pattern but I am doing an old standby so yeah I'm gonna get off here I am getting ready for Thanksgiving cleaning house that kind of stuff because Thursday I'm gonna sit and watch the Macy's Day Parade I live close enough to town that we get public TV I have not watched the Macy's Day Parade in literally years RJ hasn't watched it since he was little so yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to watch the Macy's Day Parade. 
sit around, drink coffee. I probably will make some kind of Danish or pick up some donuts or something. Um, and just do, oh, we could do pancakes or something. Yeah. So we'll have a good breakfast watching the Macy's Day Parade, and then that's it. That That's my yay kind of thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, RJ, he's watched it at his girlfriend's house, and my daughter's watched it because she lives in town, and I literally have not watched the Macy's Day Parade in a long, long time. So last year, we didn't because we had Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving or no we were cooking I was at work so I couldn't watch it um, I was at work that morning and then uh, we came here and cooked and then took Krista back and then we ate no we took her back after we ate anyway I had Krista I was half at work and then I made it home here but it was after the Thanksgiving Day Parade and so yeah I didn't get to see it last year either so I'm hoping this year to be lazy on Thanksgiving and then the following Sunday have uh, our Thanksgiving dinner. So anyway, I will talk to y'all later. Have a very blessed Thanksgiving and remember to stay humble and that I'm praying for you no matter what. And I hope that your life is going well enough that you can be thankful this Thanksgiving too. And if anyone is watching from different countries, happy Thanksgiving to you too. Just because. See y'all later. Keep watching.